Hello there my friends who listen to eBird Online. Guys, you may have heard, but there's a gap in the 90 Day Fiancé felon market. Jeffrey the Hans Pachel has been put away for 18 years without the possibility of parole. So of course now there's an opening for another idiot, Ben, come through, step right through. Ben Rathbone, yes that's right, Ben of Ben and Mahogany was arrested yesterday for a probation violation. So according to TMZ, 90 Day Fiancé star Ben Rathbun is spending time behind bars after getting busted for drunk driving in Michigan. So basically what happened was Ben was operating under the influence way back in 2020 and he was sentenced in January 2021 to 18 months probation. So he allegedly violated his probation and so he was given a hearing on February the 7th, 2022 but he didn't turn up. The judge issued a bench warrant and the rest, as they say, is history. Ben was picked up and arrested just yesterday. So apparently, according to page6.com, his bond has been set at $10,000 and his next court hearing is scheduled for next Monday, which is March the 21st. And so, you know the eBird, I didn't want to leave you hanging. There are a whole range of things that could happen to Ben as a result of this violation of his probation. So Ben's probation very probably came with a very rigid set of guidelines and rules that he had to follow successfully to complete this part of his punishment for the OUI. Now no one's really sure at the moment how he violated this but I have a few theories and I'm going to get into that a little bit later in this video. But we know he was due to turn up in court in February for that violation and he didn't turn up. And at this point, it's really weird and sketchy to me, but I wonder what's running through his mind. Did he know he was supposed to go to court? If so, why didn't he go? If not, why not? Surely you get letters about it. And also your probation officer would more than likely ring you. So it really does make me wonder, why was it that he decided not to go? But one thing's for sure, it's God's will. God drove him to this path. <laughs> I shouldn't laugh, but oh dear. But let's turn back to the actual violation. What was that? What was the initial violation of the terms of his probation? So a violation could have been anything. It could have included skipping a meeting with a probation officer, failing to pay fines in a timely manner. We're going to get onto that later because that could have a very big part in this. Or failing a drug or alcohol test. Or keeping company with people who he's not supposed to be around. And guys, literally there are so many ways to break probation. If you commit any single crime and get caught, that will be deemed that you have broken it. It could have been speeding, it literally could have been anything so, and we're never going to guess that, we're going to have to sit and wait to find out what that is, but I have a theory. I think the most likely thing for Ben is failing to pay fines or fees associated with this OUI. So whilst doing a bit of research for this story, i.e. snooping around, I came across an article in In Touch Weekly, and In Touch are alleging that Ben has had multiple financial issues over the years. And so the article states, Ben, 53, had several liens placed on his property over the years. In 2010, the Macomb County Treasurer placed a lien on his property in Warren, Michigan, due to non-payment of property taxes in the amount of $3,760. And more liens were placed on the same property in 2010 for $4,109, in 2012, for sums totaling nearly $9,000. In 2013, for sums totaling $7,100. In 2014, for sums totaling $8,300. In 2016, for sums totaling $5,500. And then in 2017, for $3,100. So really, he has a lot of liens for delinquent taxes. Guys, Ben doesn't like to pay his bills. So all of this clearly suggests to me that Ben either is struggling for money, doesn't have money, and that's not really that surprising. Let's look at Ben's lifestyle. Let's look at what Ben likes to do. So obviously he's moved out of the family home and he has a house that his kids come and stay at and, you know, they come around at weekends. And as we all know, the cost of two houses is more than one. And of course, he should be making a significant payment to maintain his former family home because, of course, it houses his four kids. And then I guess he has to pay maintenance for at least three of those four kids. I don't know what the rules are in America, but in England you have to pay until the child's 18 or finished full-time education. So if you go to uni, then that's going to be 21 or 22. So he's got all those kids to pay for. 
And then in addition to this, during this period, he was dating, remember, the 28-year-old, the one who kind of didn't like him to have too much contact with his kids. That beautiful soul. And she was quite a pretty girl. And so I guess he had to spend a little bit of money winding her and dining her and, and so on. And then we get really into the, the nitty-gritty, the crux of his midlife crisis on a budget. And as we see, he's bought that massive motorbike. You know, the one that means he's definitely not having a midlife crisis. Definitely not. Yep, that one. I'm not into bikes at all, but from what my subscribers tell me, it cost a pretty penny. And then we have the plane tickets and the whole M-Hog scenario. So according to Ben at this point, he's lent Mahogany a thousand dollars. And the eBird 90 Day Fiancé Splendid Daddy Questionable Payments Theorem provides the following. If you want to find out the true amount that a Splendid Daddy has paid to a sugar baby, you take the amount first admitted and you add a zero to the end. You then times that figure by two and bingo, there you have your number. So Ben says he lent M-Hog a thousand dollars, take the amount, add a zero, ten thousand dollars, times it by two, twenty thousand dollars, and that's more than likely nearer to your amount. And then finally, he's paying for this wild goose chase with mahogany. And so as we know, he bought a ticket to go. And the day before he was supposed to go, she cancelled it all. So I guess he lost some money on the hotels possibly. But I believe he would have lost all of the money on the plane ticket. And we know she tried to do the same again. And although it looked like Ben travelled economy, he was taking two hour taxi rides. And he's booking hotels, two rooms at all times. Three if you count her parents. <laughs> we don't. And all of this must be fairly expensive. So if Ben didn't have the money to pay his property taxes in 2010, 2012, 2013, 2015, 2016 and 2017, why would he have the money to pay court fines in 2019 or 2020? I think when Ben sees an official letter drop through the door, he burns it. That's what I think. But guys, I've just thought of something. When we first saw Ben on this show, he was driving around on that motorbike. I specifically remember seeing him drive down the road on that motorbike. Maybe that was his violation. Maybe the judge was hoping to get a glimpse of Jeffrey, the felon, Pashel, and instead caught Ben revving up and doing wheelies around the streets of Michigan. Maybe that's it. Maybe that was his parole violation. And maybe that's why he was due back in court. But if you think about it logically, if you've got an OUI or a DUI, you're not allowed to drive anything. They don't simply say, well, you're not allowed to drive your Range Rover, but it's okay. You can drive your powerful motorbike. That's fine. No, you wouldn't be allowed to drive anything. So I think this could well be his violation. I really do. And the num school that is Ben did the whole thing on camera. Yeah, the more I think about it, Ben, you should have never got on that bike. You should have just got on the train and had a dance. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, this is the end of the video. It would seem Ben's in more than just a little bit of trouble. And I'll bring you an update just as soon as I've got any more information. What is it with 90 Day Fiancé and their abject failure to do even the most preliminary background checks on any of their cast? I mean, all of these fines and the DUI was a matter of public record. That means it's really not difficult to find out. And at this point, I'm starting to think, I kind of feel like you don't want to know. Or possibly, it really helps your marketing along. That could well be it. So I just don't know why they don't do the mandatory checks. It's not that difficult. And just very quickly, for all of those out there who are thinking, well, DUI is no big deal. It's not a real crime. It kind of is because it kind of does kill people from time to time. So it's kind of a big deal. And it's also kind of a big deal when you have four kids and you're banned from driving because of course it makes it ultimately more difficult for you to see them and I don't know to do stuff with them. I kind of feel like DUIs are a young man's game. People get them when they're too stupid to know how dangerous driving under the influence actually is. I think by the time that you're 52 or 54 or whatever Ben is, you kind of realise the potential harm you could be doing to somebody's life, not least your own. Anyway guys, let me know what you think in comments down below and I'm going to go and work on my next video, The Madness of Ben. Please, if you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing to my channel. Make eBird a happy eBird, it's fun over here. And also if you've enjoyed this video, please don't forget to smash that like button 
and I'll see you soon. Thank you so much for listening. You've been listening to eBird Online and I bid you good day.